Hello everybody, this is Marty with Marty's Moccasins and Things. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. If you want to know when one put, is put up immediately, go ahead and hit that little bell for your notifications. Uh, this one is a wire loop bracelet that we're going to be working on. This baby is toddler proof. Ain't no little kid going to grab this and yank on it. We're going to make a bracelet. You can make a necklace. You can do anything with these that you want to do, as long as you got the patience to make it long enough. So I've already hooked these together so you can kind of see the concept that we're doing here. I am using 20 gauge silver wire. I am using 8 millimeter amethyst beads with this pretty little centerpiece faceted amethyst rectangle. You're going to need some chain or some uh, jump rings to make your chain with and to hook your clasp on whatever clasp you're going to use I'm just going to use this little lobster claw uh, you're going to need your wire cutters of course you're going to need round nose pliers and you're going to need your chain nose pliers so I'm using eight millimeter beads and I've already determined that a three inch piece of wire is perfect to wrap these beads and to make them into this little link here. So, I'm not sure exactly how long everything's gonna be. For your focal point, you just need to make sure you've got an inch and a half or so of wire on each end so you've got plenty of room for your loop. Now this thing is spinning around like that. I don't really like that, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some kinks to this wire I've already done two. I'm going to do one more. Just to be a nice little kink. Straighten her back out. And don't flatten it. And then where'd you go? Then we're going to shove you in there. See how tight it goes in there? Now, no more spinning. All right, so this is the same concept for this as we're going to do for the beads. So I'll do it a little different here, but the very, very tippy tip of my chain nose pliers and just give it a bend. Get your round nose pliers. Figure out how big you want your loop. I've settled on about there and just bring it up and around move your pliers see I ran out of room here so just spin your pliers around so that you've got good body mechanics going and if you want to you can move your focal piece out of the way for this one or let it slide off which it did on its own so that'll be fine I'm going to do a couple of twists we're going to squish it up to the top because I got a little out of rounds there. Some people are obsessed with perfection. That's fine. I, on the other hand, am not. I don't see how anything other than machines can be perfect, so I don't strive for that. Take and trim off your little leg when you're done. Squish her down a little bit. Sometimes it squishes nicely, sometimes it's a pain when there's no bead there. That one's gonna squish nicely. If it doesn't, you just put the bead on back on there and shove it against there and then just go in and pushing up here, shoving it towards the knot or the twist and then you can go around and make sure that it's nice and flat now the trick here is is you're going to want both of these to be facing the same way so in order to do that with this rectangle it's easier to do it this way we're going to flip them when we're done but right now see we've got this one facing that way so we're going to want to bend this one the same way so now when we do our loop they're both going to be the same um, pro note, if you are a wrapper of other stones, or anything really, um, uh, 
keep your scrap wire. Anything over three inches of wire you should hang on to. Every piece of wire that I'm using on this bracelet comes from all the scrap that I had laying over on my table. I just throw it all into a pile and when there's a big enough pile I go ahead and make something that uses small pieces of wire and that way I'm not wasting all those three, four, five, eight inches of wire that I sometimes miscalculate when I do other projects. Cut off your tail, squish it down like you did the other one. Just sort of go around and around and squish it down so no sharpie sharpies are going to be scratching anybody. And there we go. All right, now, oops, how do we hook them all together? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. I know I want at least one link on each side of that. So, <clears throat> now we're gonna do our beads. and see what we get. All right, so, like I said, these are three inch pieces of wire. I'm using 20 gauge silver. Just slide it on somewhere close to the middle and bend it over. Get the bead out of your way. It's just easier that way. It's easier to measure where you want your loops to be. Now for this one, it's going to be a little different because we want to hook two together. So what we're going to do, body mechanics, bring your loop around and go like that. And here's where you want to connect. You want to stop right there. You want this to be there because then you can take this one and just slide it on and pop him inside your loop so that it's connected. And you have to do that before you wrap it because there's no way to do it after. Bent my wire a bit, straighten her out. Then just come back in with your round nose pliers and shove it back in there as far as you can get it so that it's nice and tight and then do your wrap. I'm doing pretty much two, two and a half spins around. Cut off your excess. Slide your bead back on. Pushing up with my thumb and finger. I'm gonna get my chain those pliers out of here and we're gonna round it off so that the pointy part is gone. Making sure. Alright. Now for these, we're wanting the loops to be the same way again. So we're gonna put our bead down here. We're gonna put our loop there. Hold it, chain those whatever direction you want to do you can do 10 of these wraps I don't doesn't matter however the look you want but to get two you need the very tip end of your chain nose so round those back up put it back where you want it you can mark your pliers so that they're all of your loops are the exact same size I just eyeball it we're here got that a little tight so we're gonna open that up just a little and then we're gonna hook our center piece here put it back together close it back down and do our reps you want to make sure you leave a little bit of space between the bead and the last loop that you're going to make so that you've got room to squish your sharpie point down. Get in as tight as you can. Holding on to any wire so it doesn't fly up into your face. Put your eye out or into the carpet so that later on when you're walking you step on it and stab yourself. Then we just squish this one down. Just going sort of, I'm squishing as I go around in a circle. It's not squishing very easily. There we go. Once you get it, just go kind of go around and around and around. And it's squished down. And see, here's what you got. 
everything's hooked together nothing's coming off like I said I'm not sure that I could pull this thing apart so I got my four beads on that side now we want to hook the other side together so just same thing that bead went rolling we'll find it in a minute I got a cream colored carpet so purple will be easy to find about the middle, kink her over. Oops. Fingers are slippery. Got my wire all mangled. Straight wire is kind of important. All right. Back to where am I? Why is it being obstinate? There we go. Around, leave some space so we can hook this in there like so. I pre-made these three, two sections of three just to save time on the video. And then just do your reps. I think I've left enough room. It gets down to where it's too sm small, and you stab yourself like that. Just hook onto it tight, use your pliers, and bring it around. Push it up a little bit. Go around and around in a circle, gently squeezing. Oops, see, and if it gets out of line, you just pull it back up there. The easiest way to do that is to do this put your jaws inside your loop. Go to the other side, please. Thank you. Grab a hold of the end and just squish up a little bit, and then it puts it right back in line. Bead back on there. I am slowly, slowly getting better. My illness is still not done ravaging me, but I am getting there. That's why the videos are so far apart, and they're going to be apart for the rest of the summer anyway, because I've scheduled quite a few shows because I missed. Let's see, look at that. That one is being a real pain because I've missed two shows that I had scheduled and paid for already. I've missed five weeks of work, so I got to do some extra work to get some extra pay. I'm going to Kentucky to see my dad. There we go, you stubborn little bugger. I have a rule if I get too frustrated with a piece that I'm working on. I will put it down, but that one came out okay. A little bit of blood, but that's all right. We'll clean it off later. Get some alcohol and scrub it down. But I had to reschedule a trip to go see my dad. I'm going to teach him how to do some wire wrapping. He's getting up there in age and he can't get out and around like he normally was three years ago. Alright, remember, make your loop go in the same direction. Tip me, tip me the end of your pliers and bend it over. This was going to be a little bit longer video than I thought, but that's alright. Sometimes stubbornness makes things go longer. opening so that you can get your bracelet back center piece on there get it back in there and do your wraps see this one got a little long for some reason so we're gonna do some extra wraps on it looks like maybe
bit farther. So the problem is, is I messed that up a little bit, and there's really no way to get in there and fix it. So I've put my wire up tight against my bead, so that hopefully when I go to squish down my sharp end, it will kind of close up that gap above, because the wire is going to move and give it space if you give it enough pressure. But not too much pressure, because you don't want to squish the whole thing. We're all pliers. Just get it in here, hold the other end tight. Going in a slow circle, squeezing, 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 squeezing. Yeah, it's acceptable. Again, I don't shoot for perfection because I don't think it's achievable by a human being. And there we go. Here is our bracelet. Ta-da! How long is it? It is... <laughs> Unkink the little kink. There we go. Well, it's seven and three quarter inches, so I put my lobster clasp on that end, and it's going to be eight. And put a two inch piece of chain on the end for an extender, and I'll have an eight to ten, actually. Yeah, we can always make it. So yeah, four eight millimeter beads, and this one is about eh, a shade over an inch long. And I've got a nice big bracelet. I'm going to put a one inch adjuster on there and so it'll be an eight to nine inch bracelet i can always add to it or subtract from it at the booth if somebody buys it so simple and easy like i said i'm going to use chain you can use uh jump rings just take your chain link and you find i'm going to give it two find where it comes apart. I'm going to use some bent nose pliers to help me open it up just like a chain or just like a jump ring. Hook that on there. Oops, out of the way. Hook that on there like so. Close it back up. All these chain links are just like jump rings. Careful. Squish it together. Jump rings are not as forgiving if you mess it up as chain link is. I just think it lays better and it looks a little prettier. Throw this guy on there. Close it back up. And there's our connector. Got enough wiggle room that you can move it around, not so hard. I know a lot of people don't like those lobster claws on bracelets, but... And I'm wanting about an inch <laughs> of chain link here. Alright, we're going to do this the easy way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine links gives me an inch. So we just come in here and we count down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm taking open the ninth link. Another pro tip, make sure that this is on the left hand side if you're right handed. The main part of your chain part you want to keep you want to be on the right hand side and here's why take that apart that just slips right off slip this one right back on and your right hand never had to unhook and then close it up boom and there we have a very pretty amethyst bead wire wrapped wire link bracelet
it, no way it'll fit on my wrist, but I can spread it out here so you can see. There's our focal point. And around and around we go. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye. Oh, let's put this down here so you can see it. Do, 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 do. There we go. Bye-bye, y'all.